large storage tanks. The majority of these are made of a durable, ultraviolet resistant plastic, and they come in sizes up to 5,000 gallons. They are usually fitted with one or more connection points at the top for filling and an outlet point at the base. They are available in more than one color and are available in different gauges or wall thicknesses. The thinner ones are less expensive and lighter in weight, but not nearly as durable. Tank prices can range from around 50 cents to about a dollar per gallon of storage capacity. Regardless of which color and weight you choose, it is recommended that the tanks be painted with a material that will bond to the surface and keep sunlight out. This is because even the black tanks actually transmit enough light to allow algae to grow in the water inside. This painting is critically important in drinking water systems unless the tanks are located in an area which receives absolutely no sunlight, such as under a solid deck. The tanks should be placed on a firm, level base. It can be concrete or packed road base, or it can be a more flexible material like coarse sand. Because the tank material is slightly flexible, it is important to remember that a full tank will be a few inches wider in diameter than an empty one. Keep this in mind when spacing multiple tanks. It also means that the connections, the lower connections especially, should be made with flexible pipe since even a slight shift could crack rigid pipe or fittings. Metal tanks are also available, such as this one at the Cibolo Nature Center in Burney, which supplies rainwater for a beautiful aquatic feature. As you can see, it has been surrounded with wood so that it blends in with its surroundings. This wooden skin also helps keep the water cooler during the summer months. Plastic tanks can also be disguised with wood or stone if desired, but don't forget to allow for expansion as the tank fills. If your plan is to become totally water independent, you will almost certainly need several tanks linked together. They are usually plumb so that they can fill simultaneously or in series since a really good rain might fill more than one tank. The outlet should be fitted with individual cutoff valves so that in the event of a leak or a faucet accidentally left on, you would only lose water from one tank. Again, these lower connections are best made with a flexible material. Your choice of fittings is also important. Avoid using compression type fittings above ground since under pressure they may separate, causing leaks and water loss. The connections should also be insulated to prevent damage in a hard freeze. Since large tanks are hard to empty and clean, you should plan on one or more filters to keep debris from entering the tanks. This is a primary filter system designed to keep out leaves, twigs, and larger particles. This is a secondary filter which will take out smaller particles. It will also need periodic maintenance. It is important to keep filters clean because if they become even partially clogged during a heavy rain, water will back up in pipes and gutters and may be lost. This may be all you will need for an effective rainwater system for landscape use. If your tanks are located at a lower elevation, as is frequently done to hide them from view, you will need a mechanism for pumping the water back to the level where it will be used. In a landscape system, you may leave one tank at a higher level and use a relatively small, inexpensive pump to keep it filled. In a whole house system, you will need a pump and pressure tank just as you would have on a well. If you plan a whole house potable water system, a great choice in the hill country, you will need a couple of additional features. You will probably want a first flush system to divert the first few gallons of water that come off of a dirty roof. It's amazing how much dust and debris can accumulate between rains, along with that chemical film that is deposited by our polluted air. This is the simplest system, and it works well whether you are at home or not. This large diameter pipe, sometimes called a drip leg, collects the first few gallons of water, then after it fills, the water simply runs across the top, through your filters, and into your tanks. A very small hole at the bottom allows this dirty water to drain out slowly so that it will be ready for the next rain. The cap can be removed occasionally to get out larger debris. The other feature needed on a potable water system is a purifier to destroy potentially harmful microbes such as bacteria. Most commonly used is an ultraviolet light. 
This is a small, simple, relatively inexpensive cousin of the larger units used in municipal sewage treatment plants and is normally installed on the line leading to your indoor faucets only since it is not necessary to purify landscape water. The light may be equipped with a battery backup so that water is purified even during a power outage. In this video, we have demonstrated systems for basic homeowner use. Large-scale rainwater harvest is also a good idea for schools, public buildings, and commercial structures. Bernie's Champion High School, for instance, collects rainwater for use in the landscape. The Bandera High School collects rainwater from the faculty parking lot for landscape use. As you can see, rainwater is a very viable option as a total water source. To encourage its use, a number of incentives are available. In Texas, all parts of a rainwater catchment system are exempt from sales tax, and the value of the system is not included in your ad valorem property tax base. In a number of counties, cash and tax rebates and credits are also available. Check with your local tax district to learn more. There are many other benefits to rainwater harvest and use. Installing a rainwater system is frequently less expensive than drilling a well. Maintenance of a rainwater system is easier and is less expensive to maintain than a well. It is naturally pure soft water, so a commercial water softener is unnecessary. It is free from purifying chemicals added by water utilities. Drought stage rules don't apply to its use. It is a ready source of water for firefighting. It offers peace of mind about your water supply and the protection of our precious aquifers and springs. In the event that you ever do run out of water, you have tanks that can be filled easily from an alternative water source. As you have seen, rainwater harvest is practical for almost everyone. In the future, it may be our most important water source.